Hi guys, I am an internal monologue Masato. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a decaf coffee using an Italian espresso tool and then make a hot sangha in a very simple way. This is not happening on weekdays, but pretty much every weekend. If you wanna have a nice cuppa, then this video is gonna be a piece of good advice. And also probably the tool I'm gonna use is not quite common in Japan. I reckon Nespresso machines are much more popular nowadays, but I don't think it offers a good taste. So if you wanna know something interesting with respect to coffee making, please stay tuned. Okay, I've just put enough water into the coffee funnel tank, and then I'm preparing for the grand coffee powder now. Normally, I'm having the Illy coffee, um, but this time I'm using a different brand, which is not too bad. I'm not bloody choosy picky, so I don't mind which brand it's gonna be. Right, okay, so I'm using a mocha pot, which brews coffee by passing boiling water pressurized by steam through ground coffee. You see I'm placing the ground coffee powder into the coffee funnel tank. And one tip I want to show you is that this ground coffee powder shouldn't be pressed too much, just a bit to be flat, making sure around tank should be kept clean, cause otherwise it's gonna likely be damaged. So make sure you check before putting this coffee maker on the heater. Like this. Then put this kettle back together with this tank. Okay, now I'm ready to turn on the electric stove. The temperature shouldn't be too hot, just moderate. Even low fire is the best, cause the water has to filter slowly into the ground coffee. So, well, I think I'm gonna select the fire level 5 out of 10, which should be good. In the meantime, I am preparing for coffee cups and putting in a bit of sugar. Usually, I prefer having a long black, so no sugar, no milk. But because I'm working on weekends at home, I need sugar for re-energizing my body, yeah. So I'm having a nice and sweet coffee, which might destroy coffee's quintessential taste. But never mind, no one's actually stopping me from having lots of sugar. Okay, steam is rising from the mocha pot. Now is the right time to switch off the heater as soon as it begins to mumble. Yep. It looks like this. I don't know why, but I'm always excited about making a coffee nowadays, simply because I am one of the coffee addicts like you guys. Hmm, smells really elegant and aromatic. Okay, I'm done. Awesome. Now I am gently gripping the handle and pouring coffee into a cup like this. Don't waste any remaining coffee inside. Although I'm not mean with money for study. I am a bit with food, partly because I wasn't raised in a wealthy family, so I intrinsically I don't lavish money on food. Right, then I'm gonna mingle with boiled water to make my favorite coffee, which is kind of called American. Despite having a weak taste, I normally resist having a straight coffee without mixing a bit of boiled water with milk. But actually, I reckon it tastes excellent. Of course, I also love having a strong coffee such espresso as Afghado or Piccaro Latte, since this mocha pot is not intended to make these sorts of special types of coffee. I'm having them at the cafe. Anyway, here is my favorite milk, which is almond milk, unsweetened. And this brand, Bitter Soy, is probably one of the best ones selling in Australia. I'm having both almond milk for copper and soy milk for milk soup or other dishes. And uh, lastly, I just stir coffee with a spoon well until sugar inside the cup is dissolved nicely. Okay, nearly getting there. Sorry, as you know, I am just talking to myself. So please understand that I tend to be a bit strange but I am a normal person. Doing an internal monologue is my profession and showing how to do it in a practical way. Okay, here is sliced bread and from now on I'm preparing for hot sangas, just putting two mushrooms and some shredded cheese. This one's my favorite one, mozzarella, and I put this away at the moment. Right, and here's last night's leftover onion. 
I don't actually even need the whole onion, just a quarter is fine. And I reckon most importantly I need eggies here, just use two. Here is the package. I normally use a free range one. Can you see RSPCA approved? RSPCA is a British based organization aiming for preventing the abuse of animals. Have you ever heard of this organization? This stands for Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. I'm not quite sure what sort of charity or movement they are embarking on. Anyway, here is the inside package which describes some background information. If you're interested, please pause this video now and read them aloud, which is kind of good English learning training. Right, that's all what I need for cooking at the moment. Okay, first up, I am cutting a quarter onion like this is a in a very simple way. And I don't know why, I always subconsciously try to collect old sliced onions like neat and tidy and put them away in the corner. And next, cut mushrooms. Sorry, accidentally I cut off this thing. Right then, place a bit of coconut oil into this tiny frying pan and spreading this evenly like that. Okay, it's getting warmer and warmer. Should be alright? I think so. Then. I'm gonna put onions first, cause it's gonna take a bit longer to be cooked. I mean, the onion's color is changing from green to white. And yep, after changing the color, I'm gonna put the next one, which is mushrooms. Before that, um, I need a cooking tool. Um, chopsticks works better for me, personally. Where is another one? Oh dear, well, I got it. Okay, put mushrooms here and then use chopsticks to stir to cook this nicely. Right, just to be honest, I'm not good at cooking, nor do I like it. But at weekends, I feel like I wanna cook something before kickstarting Saturday's work. I normally have a few days off on weekdays, and towards the weekend, I tend to be quite hectic. Alright, nearly getting there. Now I reckon it's the right time to put the generous sprinkle pepper on the top of the onion and the mushrooms here. Here is the pepper I'm normally using. This is a whole black peppercorn selling at Coles, which is one of the biggest supermarkets here in Australia. Uri's is, I guess, more common than Coles, but overall quality of both shops are indiscernible. I reckon Coles is the orthodox, Uri's is a bit gorgeous, and IGA is unique. That's my prejudicial opinion. Okay, now I think I need soy milk and eggies. Here is a bitter soy soy milky, my favorite one as I've emphasized earlier. Before putting some milk, crack eggies directly without whipping them. I'm just too lazy to cook in a proper way, you know? But no worries, she'll be right, right? Just put eggies and some milk, and then continue to stir them using chopsticks. When I'm cooking, I feel like I'm too Asian because I feel comfortable using chopsticks all the time. Okay, so... Oh, so just hang on a sec, please. I'm washing my hands because uh, they're a bit sticky. I just realized that I should've put soy milk first before cracking eggies. Ah, uh, that's alright. Just a minor mistake. There'll be nothing to do with the cause of any eventuality. Let me push on. A bit of more stirring. Looks really yum. I prefer a raw egg, but I'm a bit scared of it because of having the possibility of getting a salmonella food poisoning. So I always make sure whether it's sufficiently cooked to kill any bacteria. Okay, here we go. This guy is gonna be inside a hot sanger. Right. I just placed this hot sandwich maker on the bench and put this sliced bread on the hot plate nicely. And then I'm gonna take this cooked onion and mushrooms with eggies and milk. I'm gonna kind of decorate them on the top of the bread. And this bread is a bit small, so I found it quite difficult to decorate without dropping outside the bread. It looks okay, but not quite. And then next, I'm gonna sprinkle some mozzarella cheese but I don't put it too much because otherwise it's gonna be too cheesy, which I don't like, nor does this make either. I always want to minimize any extra cleaning, but keep everything pretty much spotless, which is my motto with regard to domestic chores. 
Okay then, this is also a very important spice for making hot sandwich much more tasty, which is tomato ketchup. This one is less added sugar and salt, but actually a normal one is much healthier than this diet version. Okay, I'm putting it here on both breads evenly. And now the hot plate is getting hotter and hotter to be ready for putting these breads on the top for each. In the final process, I'm gonna press here to squeeze these breads slowly. Not press too much at first, cause otherwise you're gonna destroy the shape of hot sangers. Right, nothing you can do right now. Just wait a couple of minutes for further pressing these breads. In the meantime, I can relax and sip my coffee. Now, it looks great. I'm pressing further to squeeze more and more. The more I press further, the nicer the inside hot sanga is gonna be cooked. Okay, I reckon it's almost ready to transfer these breads to the plate and get ready to eat afterward. Done! Here is a typical Aussie hot sanga. I'm just famished. Thanks for watching how I make a coffee and hot sanga. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye! Today's words Electric stove Quintessential Addict Leftover A quarter Famished